Okay. This is the story so far. So, do you ever have those moments where, or days even, where you're just searching for answers and you can't find them and you feel a bit lost? Me too. I'm so used to being the one that helps people. And I was searching, I was searching. I had this news and I was trying to get my head around it and I was searching for something positive, some sort of hope. And I was struggling. And then out of the blue, it's like an angel appeared on earth. And she has no idea how much she helped me. And I found my center. I found my truth. I found <laughs> what it is about me that has me doing what I do and realized I'm going to share my story because it'll help me. But because I really want others to be able to find what I'm sharing if they're struggling so they can find their hope and, and for me to be able to help them in some way like my angel helped me this morning. So it all started <laughs> while I was overseas quite recently in August and I had this really itchy um, spot on my foot, really itchy and a little bit sore and eventually I think I scratched the top off it and... And it healed and forgot all about it. But at the same time, I'd noticed this little lump in my groin that had been sort of there and growing. Came home and I, w I had been feeling tired. I'd been feeling fatigue and this fatigue had been getting worse and worse for, for a little while. If I look back, it was probably since February, March time, but I hadn't taken much notice until it got really worse. And then I thought, perhaps it's my thyroid. Went to my doctors, had my bloods done. Yeah, my doctors, my, my bloods are all over the place with the thyroid. So we got referred to an um, endocrinologist. And at the same time, I said, I'm also, I've also got this funny lump. Doctor thought it's probably nothing, but we'll get it um, looked at. And yeah, we got it looked at. We had it, um, um, an ultrasound. The ultrasound people weren't happy with what they saw. They wanted to go back for core biopsies. And it showed cancer cells. Um, SCC, which is squamous cell carcinoma, in the lymph nodes, which was not very good to hear. In fact, my doctor described it as a bombshell. But what we needed to do was to find the primary, the primary cancer. I had nothing showing. Now, I, I tell you what, over the last few weeks, my private parts have been looked at by various people. They've been scrutinized <laughs> and explored, and nothing's been found. Um, nothing. The only thing I could say was, uh, at the beginning, well, I had this really itchy thing on my foot, so we had it biopsied, and it didn't, it was only a shaving, and it showed a, a possibility, but my doctor didn't think it was appropriate, but she sent it off. I went to see the doctor at the hospital, the surgeon, and I then went for a PET scan, which highlights cancer in your body, came back clear. We're struggling. We can't find the primary. The only indication is this little spot that was on my foot. So what it means is I need to have surgery to remove the lymph nodes in my groin, in my inguinal area, which is, I'm not happy. And it's not, the, the actual surgery is not too bad, but it's the after effects of the surgery that I'm really not happy about. It means a high risk of lymphedema, it's like swelling, It's the, the lymphatic system is what moves fluid around your body. It means um, having operation and probably having um, drains in my leg for up to six weeks maybe. It means wearing compression stockings for a year. It's going to limit my ability to do all the things I love to do. My running, my dancing, my roller skating and, and it limits my travel. I'm not going to be able to travel. I was supposed to be going to see Adam in February in, in Thailand and everything's delayed. So yesterday I had um, a meltdown, really. I was like a two-year-old having a temper tantrum. I couldn't see the forest for the trees and I lost sight of what I know to be true. I know it's not what happens to us that creates our uh, reality. It's our response to what's happening to us and and so I was searching. I've been searching for a while, looking at Google, looking at everything to do with this app and what it means. And I couldn't find, oh, I found lots of stuff, lots of research, lots of surgeons, um, 
reports and things, but I was wanting personal experiences. And all I could find was shitty stuff <laughs> until this morning when I got s some sense. Um, this lovely girl is going through her own journey, something very similar. And yes, she's having radiation at the moment, but she went through surgery. She, she, she had the drains for six weeks. She's much, much younger than me. Um, and she's coping okay. She said it wasn't that bad. And it's like, it's not what happens to us, it's how we respond. So that's where I'm at right now. And I'm sharing my journey, just like I did when I had breast cancer. I shared my journey for three reasons. Back then, it was 2012, and I blogged my journey. This time, it's going to be shared through my YouTube channel. So, and for three reasons. One is it allows me to get everything off my chest and, and to be able to work things out in my own head. It also allows my friends and family around the world to be able to, to watch the video instead of having to ask Andrew all the time what's going on. And thirdly, and most importantly... If you're listening to this and you're stuck and you're scared, reach out. Let's let's have a chat or just follow my channel and you might find the answers there because I'm going to share what's helping me along the way. We're at, I'm at the beginning of this journey. Most of my friends and family are saying, look, Wange, we'd rather have you here than the alternative. So I'm getting my head around it now and I am OK. I really am OK. And... Now we cut this thing out, we treat it, and it's it, it's not spread to any major organs, which we thought the PET scan was going to show something, <laughs> and it hasn't. In some ways, I wish it had, because then we'd know what we were treating, but we're good. I'm good, and if you want to follow along, if you're interested, if you know anyone who's struggling who might benefit from it, I'm a hypnotist, I'm a coach, um, I'm Ange, and I... I'm here to help in any way that I can. So that's where I'm at right now, guys. Um, let's see how this journey goes. Um, I'm a warrior. Um, and I'm up for a channel a challenge. It's a bit like when I do ultra runs. We never know what to expect along the way. You know, some bits are really tough. Um, some of it we enjoy. Um, it's all about mind, body and spirit and, and nurturing. And I'm looking after me right now. I'm still seeing um, some of my private clients, but I'm really cutting back and, and nurturing me, having lots of coffee with friends. I'm still out doing a little bit of running, just I've taken the pressure off. I was so, so fighting the fatigue, wondering what was wrong with me. Why am I running slow? Why am I getting tired? Why am I not enjoying my work? Why do I not want to go and, and do all the things that I love to do? I was really fighting it. And once I knew there was a reason for me feeling the way I did, I started to feel better. So if you've got any good books that you recommend reading, let me know. Um, any um, Netflix stuff. At the moment, I've got three episodes left of the Good Karma Hospital that we've been really enjoying. Well, I've been really enjoying. Simon's been putting up with it, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I need to go because it's time to go for a coffee with yet another friend. So until next time and... I'm sorry it's shitty news, but it's actually, it's good news really. Okay, bye.